Welcome back to the channel. Today is Tuesday, the second part of the Photoshop review. Now this is not a complete at all review of Photoshop. We're going to be looking again at CS5 on Mac OS 10.6.5. This is the extended version, legal as I pointed out yesterday. Yesterday's video was nearly 23 minutes long and I have to apologize for that. That is by far the longest video I've actually ever uploaded or ever recorded. So uh, we're going to aim to go less than 10 minutes today. We're just going to be talking about the text tool in Photoshop. Over the next several days, speaking of several days, I would like to wish everybody a happy holiday no matter what that is. Merry Christmas. That's my holiday of choice, but uh, depending on uh, whatever then happy holidays so um, videos this week came Monday today obviously tomorrow is the last video for the week I'm gonna take Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday Monday and Tuesday off we'll be back next Wednesday and then live next Tuesday night so this is gonna be the text tool over the next several days we're gonna be talking about office Mac 2011 I did buy that suite we have Word Excel and PowerPoint here we'll be taking a look at that talking about it next to iWork and today's tech or today's post on tech inform tech inform .us. it's our tech blog was actually about office Mac 2011 so without further ado we're gonna go ahead and create a new document we'll do the same as yesterday we'll do an 8 by 10 incher 8 by 10 150 dpi and we're just going to play with a text tool today so it's located on the left in the uh, column of tools here it's a big t if it doesn't say that you may have these icons here which are t's with arrows on them and marquees around them you just want the regular text tool which is called a horizontal text horizontal type tool below that you can type down vertically if you want to do something like that and then you have a mask tool as well we just want the one at the top so uh, I think we'll just keep the background white and the font black. Uh, change the font color, you want to change your foreground color. In the bottom left, it's the little color swatch on top and the top left. We'll make it black, bottom left or bottom right, anywhere on the bottom here in this color picker is black or the hex key uh, six zeros. So uh, there's two ways to create a text layer. Notice we have one layer right now, it's the background layer and it's locked, so we'll go ahead and unlock that, not that it matters, but we can click and that's usually how I create a text layer. From here, you can just type. You can see we're using the Edwardian script ITC. I don't know, that's what it said. So we have that. If we don't want that, uh, notice you do have to click the little no smoking sign or the check mark up here to accept or deny your changes. We'll just accept that. That's on its own layer there. We can move it around and edit it later. Go back to the text tool and we can make a text box. And this is going to allow us to uh, kind of set off the area we want to be able to type in. So now when we type, it's not going to go off the palette here, it's just going to go down on another line. And all of this is editable. Notice I'm still typing and nothing's showing up. If I drag this box down, there it is. Then we have to click check up there to keep that as well. So now we have these two layers and notice it named these layers what we typed. Well, you may not want that. So we can double click on the name and we'll uh, layer, we'll name that top one um, text one and then the one in the bottom we'll name that text two so from here we can of course edit that text maybe we spelled something wrong or the whole thing if you double click on the T it's gonna bring you back to this box where you can come in here change your font color your script your uh, well your size your sharpness orientation within itself align left align center and align right give it a text warp adjust all these fine tune settings and of course add effects but you don't do that from here so we can edit uh, two. How about we make the top one say um, blue microphone as that's what I'm using to record this. And then we'll make the bottom text group say uh, MacBook Pro as that's what it will be exported on. Then we'll change the font on MacBook Pro by highlighting it like that and coming up to our font selector. We can install any font we want. There's a crap load here on default. We'll use something that's easy to read, Arial, there it is. It kind of looks like it's in bold, so we'll double click on that. No, it's actually in regular. How about we put it in bold? Let's see what that looks like. There it is in bold. We're actually in size 70.37, and there's two ways to adjust your size. One, you can, of course, adjust the box that this thing is within, which is going to adjust it that way. Um, and then to you know the actual size of it, you can come up here, and maybe we don't want 70. How about 48? That didn't work because I didn't highlight it because I'm retarded. So we'll go back up here, 48, there it is. That's actually 48.37, but you get the idea. Center it in the middle, we'll change that color to blue. There it is, there's our blue font. 
Then we'll come up to blue microphones, which in reality should have been blue, but we're going to make it uh, the color of the MacBook Pro. We'll change that font to Handwriting Dakota. And there it is. Now, the other way to adjust the font that I was talking about before is your Command T command, which we talked about yesterday. So hit Command T on your Mac. Hold down your Shift key to uh, keep its aspect ratio right, and then you can drag it around like this. Move it over here, and there it is. So now we'll talk about some effects, because, you know, that's pretty easy. To add effects on any of this stuff, select the layer you want. Don't double click the title, double, double click to the right of that. And that's going to bring up your layer style uh, options here. So right now we're working with layer one. How about we put a stroke over it, see which one it is. Looks like, looks like it's the MacBook Pro layer. We can put a drop shadow on that. Apple does a lot of drop shadows. From here, adjust your opacity. All the stuff I talked about yesterday. If you missed that video, go to my channel, look under um, sort by date added. It'll be the one before this. It's like 22 minutes and 58 seconds long or something ridiculous like that. Uh, so there's your drop shadow. You can change your color. Blend mode, we'll just make that normal angle, put it at any angle we want, make it a little bit bigger, actually distance for that, there it is. All of these things are the same I talked about yesterday, all these effects can be added to text. The ones that I usually add are the drop shadow and a bevel and emboss, which gives the text a more 3D computerized look instead of the flat um, look that made it look like it was uh, made in paint. So you don't really want that. A stroke is going to add a like a picture frame around the whole thing, whatever, whatever color you want. And again, we went over all of this in yesterday's video. So the text tool is really actually quite simple. If we go back over to uh, some editing text here, you can see your font basics right up here, size, sharp, smooth, crisp, strong, or none. I usually just keep it on sharp. It's easy to read. Then you can give it some effects here. Let's give it a style of, how about a flag? And really, this is like 10-year-old technology, so it really looks like you made it five years ago. There's inflate, bulge. I really rarely use any of that. But what I do use is actually to the right of that, and it kind of looks like a clipboard. Click on that. You have some, uh, some definitely better... Um, customization here. So if you want to adjust, actually we're going to need two lines for that, so I'll come down here and type MacBook below it. Now notice they're pretty much on top of each other. That's six point in between. How about we put 18? Maybe we should select that first. Come in there, we'll go from 6 to 18, and notice that it moved apart a little bit. Well that's still not what we want. How about 60? Now it's way down there. Maybe we want it closer. 36, nah, that's too close. 48, too far away, we'll make it like 42. There it is, let's say that's what I wanted. You can also adjust the uh, the spacing like this. You can adjust that. <laughs> adjust your color from here, and then what it looks like if you wanna make it small like that. Put it up there, regular, turn that off. Turn off underlining, dash through it, then you can change your language here. Uh, I really recommend using Photoshop when editing a large amount of text. It's super easy to have stuff on every layer. You can move stuff, edit stuff. I know I say stuff a lot, but it, uh, ph Photoshop is a fantastic tool for editing and, uh, and working with text. It's really quite advanced and you need to play with it to get the entire, I guess, just of how this text tool works. But that's the text tool in Photoshop CS5. This should be applicable back all the way to CS3. I never used CS2, so I don't know how that would work. But thanks for watching this video, guys. It means a lot. Our website's techinform.us. My Twitter is twitter.com slash jamesrschultz. I'll be back tomorrow for the final video of the week before the holidays. And next Tuesday night, the night before I come back from my break. Not really looking forward to that that much. But as we do every Tuesday night, it's 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern time on ustream.tv slash techinformus. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, drop me a comment down below, and I'll look forward to getting back to that as soon as possible. Thanks again. Talk to you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye-bye.